Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. We take a look at your Tuesday evening update. Uh, I was trying to get this out this morning. Life kind of uh, did not allow that to happen, but that's all right. Um, this is going to cover today. I'm not going to put one out again tomorrow morning since it's only going to be about 12 hours difference. I don't see much change. So this will be your forecast for our third storm in a week. Um, it's been busy. Uh, this is your uh, storm that's coming and going to affect our area Wednesday night and overnight into uh, Wednesday. Yeah. Thursday morning, things will be wrapped up before we get to Thursday morning. Um, so, yeah, let's take a look at what's going on here across the country. First of all, you can see our storm is really getting going here across the central part of the, uh, you know, the southern plains and into the uh, Mississippi River Valley here today. Um, a couple of tornado warnings actually currently going on. A lot of severe weather uh, with this. We'll look at it on radar. It'll be impressive. Also, we definitely have a bit of a front trying to filter some cooler air down in. That's why the snow showers this afternoon, um, they've been a little bit uh, more intense than I anticipated. Uh, um, kind of lost in the shuffle of everything going on is the fact that it's actually kind of slick out there at the moment. So if you're traveling tonight, uh, be careful. Um, but they shouldn't amount to a lot of measurable snow, even though they are currently uh, whitening up the ground yet again. Um, as we take a look closer in here, you can see this front. Now, the front is not going to drive through our area, but it is filtering in some cooler air. You can also see, especially to the west of the Greens, decent amount of snow. Could be some accumulation in some of the western facing slopes, some upslope snow here. So, yeah, um, again, not anything to really be too excited about with all of everything else going on, but definitely here. And it is forcing some colder air. That's going to set the stage because our system is going to go well to our west. It is going to try to redevelop off the coast but it's going to be slow to do so, but it's going to hold the cold air in much longer um, in this kind of setup than we've had the rest of the winter. Most of the time, the rest of the winter with these kinds of setups, we've just had, and also they've just been able to blast through to our west, and we've been basically all rain. But what's going to happen with this system is we are going to get a changeover, but the bulk of the precipitation is going to happen before the changeover. Then it looks like they're going to have a dry slot move through as the storm kind of swings by, and when it would be raining then, um, I think there's actually not going to be much falling from the sky. Probably a little mist and kind of drizzle, uh, but I don't think, actually snow wise we're gonna end up okay at this it's not gonna be fluffy snow this is not powder day kind of snow but nice to continue to add to the snow base for the mountains and still the kind of stuff that you're gonna be able to cross country ski on after the fact or snowshoe all that kind of stuff that, you, um, that we've been missing out on for a lot of this winter is coming with this system so let's take a look at uh, radar as we head down to the south. Here's our storm getting going here over East Texas. Look at these lines of thunderstorms. Those are violent, uh, bow echo kind of storms. Uh, not great news for uh, for areas in uh, central and southern Louisiana. But um, uh, anyways, uh, and then also pretty good cold air on the backside of this as well. Snowing in a lot of Oklahoma um, and a little bit of mixed precipitation that way as well. But the storm, as you can see, is kind of heading up in this direction, heading west of the Appalachians, which is what most storms have done this winter. But the change here, again, with that front, with a little bit more of a high pressure system, a little bit more cold air here in eastern Canada, basically this storm is going to start to kind of die to our west and try to redevelop. The redevelopment happens late, and it's not a rapid redevelopment off the coast, which is why um, we're not going to be able to hold the cold air into the all snow. It's also why we're going to get the dry slot. So you're going to get a surge of moisture from this system, and this low pressure isn't going to be able to wrap moisture back in quick enough. Um, at least over southern Vermont to kind of have us have a second round of precipitation as this system gets going. That's going to happen too far, and this system is going to race off to the northeast as well. Um, and so what's going to happen is basically by the time the precipitation changes over for most of us, with the exception of areas west of the Greens, um, I think we're going to be mostly done with the uh, heavier precipitation and the accumulating precipitation. Um, so let's try to walk through exactly how this is going to unfold over the next day. So tomorrow morning um, in western New York and western and central Pennsylvania, snow and uh, rain down this area, mixed precipitation is already starting, starts even down this way, starts to snow and changes over a little more quickly there. By 8 to 11 a.m., south, of, most areas south and west of us are snowing. Snow is starting to creep towards Bennington. By 11 a.m., probably about noonish or so, I would think, a place like Bennington, somewhere between 12, 11.30 and 12.30 is probably when you start to get into your first flakes. Um, and that kind of steadily pushes north so that um, even up uh, by Hartford and Heartland, which are a couple of the last uh, areas in Windsor County to get going by 3 p.m. or so, you should probably be snowing. Um, with this. And again, all starts as snow. Everybody starts as snow. Everybody gets some accumulating snow. Um, it changes, and we're going to talk about that um, as we go forward here for some of the other areas. So 8 p.m., we're still all snow by 8 p.m. See, so we're going to snow for a good portion of the afternoon. Um, and areas even down in here, it's going to be heavier and wetter snow. Um, so it's not going to accumulate rapidly, but I think at least two, we're going to look at this, but I'll have a precipitation map, but at least a couple inches of snow, maybe up to three or four inches of snow, even down in places like Bennington, up through Manchester. The rest of us are continuing to pile up the snow. And as you can see, as we go forward in time, 11 p.m., we're still snow. 
And again, precipitation looks to wrap up probably by a little after midnight. By 11 p.m., we're still snow for a lot of Wyndham County, basically all of Windsor County, most of the higher terrain in Rutland County, um, up the Route 7 corridor, we kind of get that mix to come in. And the mix will be some sleet or freezing rain, maybe some rain mixing in as well. It's not going to be... Um, uh, I don't think we're going to have a, uh, we might get a brief glaze, but I don't think it's going to really, there will already be snow on the roads. I don't think this will actually make the situation much worse. It actually might make power situations a little bit better. Um, I think the trees have not shed their snow from the last system. I'm a little concerned about that. This will be heavy wet snow again. So power could become a problem. It already has been a problem down in the Brattleboro area um, and certainly some of the towns surrounding Brattleboro. I would be a little concerned just with every, the way everything is there. Certainly southwestern New Hampshire got hammered out of the last storm. And so um, they certainly, I would be a little concerned about power there as well. It would actually be good if we changed over to sleet earlier for that. Sleet helps kind of knock snow off the trees a lot of times, but a little bit concerned about that. Not so concerned that I think you need to be uh, prepared for days without power, but definitely it could lose power again in some of the spots that are harder hit. Even some of the places like uh, even where I am, where uh, we didn't really have any power issues yesterday for the most part. We do still have a lot of uh, the, the evergreens, especially have held a lot of the snow. It hasn't had a chance to fall off. We stayed cloudy the last couple of days since it dripped off. And we're going to put more snow load on top of that and again, sticky kind of snow. So that is a bit of a concern by 2 a.m., uh, basically, everybody's changed terrain, but we're basically done. Still a little bit of a mix in the higher terrain. That could be some freezing drizzle um, and, or some light sleet, basically, at that point. And, but where, so where it says it's raining, though, that's mostly just kind of drizzle, and the rain line kind of sneaks through all of uh, New Hampshire as well at that time. But again, here we might still be holding on to some wraparound precipitation as the low pressure system gets going. But across southern Vermont, um, so that'd be more like eastern, southeastern New Hampshire, across southern Vermont we stay basically. Uh, precipitation doesn't really ever come back. We might get a little bit of a tail to come through late in, uh, later on during the day on Tuesday just as the kind of the upper level system kind of swings through. But even then I don't think beyond just some flurries or some light rain, Drops. I don't think we'll really see much out of that. So, what's the uh, what are we looking at in terms of accumulations? Again, decent amount of snow, five to eight inches, um, maybe even a couple more inches for some of the highest terrain. The ski areas might do a little bit better out of that. Um, even areas, um, only areas that I think are really going to be held back are areas west of the greens. Um, so uh, Bennington up through Manchester, about two to four inches, Rutland three to five inches. Then uh, rapidly as you go up the hills, though, you go from four to six up to five to eight inches of snow. And again, four to six where we see a little bit more mixing uh, just along the Connecticut River Valley and a little bit more uh, potential for some shadowing as well. So that's, I think, what we're looking for snowfall map-wise. Um, not a huge hitter, and in the series of everything that's happened, um, probably the middle of the two storms. The first one was a real dud. Last one kind of over a decent amount. This one, assuming it comes in around here, which I think it will, um, will be in, uh, will be in, uh, you know, kind of in between those two systems. But enough to plow, enough to cause problems on the roads. However, precipitation ends early, so I think school probably school mostly happens, but it probably happens with delays on Thursday. That's my uh, thought on school at this point. And I think the snow probably gets started a little too late to cause cancellations. I would say like any kind of after school activity tomorrow probably going to be canceled as the snow gets going. Um, and then. All right, let's look at those highlights for the storm. Precipitation starts between about 12, and, uh, mid, uh, 12 p.m., so 12 noon tomorrow and 3 p.m. Moderate to heavy snow likely late in the afternoon and through evening. Travel is going to be real tough um, in the evening tomorrow and certainly overnight Wednesday. By Thursday morning, I think things are getting better. Um, certainly as the snow will have and precipitation will have let up, I think school probably happens, as I was saying. Uh, school probably happens for most areas, but delays are definitely pretty likely, I think, in a lot of spots as well. So Thursday morning, we're looking at delays. Could be some cancellations as well, but in general, I think we're looking at delays. Snow mixes with changes to sleet and then also some freezing rain and drizzle uh, from, so from south to north, roughly from southwest to northeast from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Plowable snow looks likely for all of us before the changeover. The bulk of the moisture falls as snow before changeover, except west of the greens, basically areas from uh, up Route 7 from... Bennington up to Manchester and even up to kind of up to Rutland um, at where Rutland will get a little bit more snow I think out of this than Manchester and Bennington but um, still a little bit about half and half rain and uh, uh, mix and snow in those areas and then everybody else uh, the bulk of it falls as snow all right that's what we're looking for um, thanks for uh, following me over these last week as we've had a ton of forecasts and everything like that weather does look to quiet down a little bit um, although certainly the long range still has some interesting weather coming up potentially for us
Um, so I will continue to be uh, pumping out the forecasts as weather is interesting, and I certainly always have a forecast word for you, or at least uh, especially this time of year, I always have a forecast for you, uh, work week forecast for you on Monday mornings and a uh, Friday uh, uh, morning forecast, weekend forecast for you. My patrons get a Wednesday for, for a weekend forecast, so I give it to them a little bit earlier. That's one of the benefits that you can get for being a patron. So I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons, and if you haven't, uh, if you've ever if you've thought about becoming one, now's a great time to do so. Gets your uh, gets you that forecast on Wednesday tomorrow for this weekend coming up. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel before, I'd encourage you to do so. Helps make sure people don't miss out on my on my videos. You don't miss out on my videos, and it helps other people discover my channel. So, anyways, that's what's going on. I will be back. Um, Friday morning with a look at your weekend forecast. So yeah, um, uh, the rest of the week looks quieter, so we're not gonna have the forecast for a couple days. All right, thanks, we'll be back on Friday.